All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to talk about water potential. Hopefully, you already watched the Bozeman video with um, Paul Anderson, kind of introducing you to water potential. Um, I will mention that you also have it. I've got my computer is sitting on top of my textbook right now. Um, so page 575 in your textbook also talks about water potential. Um, so I'm going to go over some sort of basic stuff. I think um, Mr. Anderson does a super job of sort of explaining um, a little bit about water potential, but I think that you're still not going to feel ready to answer some of these problems. So that's why I wanted to go over that. Um, please watch this at an accelerated rate. So we put it at 1.5 if you want to, or skip sections if you feel like you know what you're doing. Um, and then um, one other thing that I was just going to mention really quickly, as I look at the textbook, I do notice that the textbook says that um, pressure is measured in megapascals. And yet um, this worksheet and I'm going to scooch ahead, this um, equation sheet, which AP Biology give you, gives you, measures pressure in bars. So for our purposes, because the um, AP Biology equation sheet is measured, the pressure is measured in bars, we're going to be using bars. The relationship between megapascals and bars is a 1 to 10 ratio. So every 1 megapascal is 10 bars. So they're virtually identical terms, just move the decimal over one, whatever, but we're not going to worry about megapascals because that's not what AP Biology has on their sheet for you. Um, so I did copy and paste this right here so you could take a look. This would be on your equation sheet for an AP Biology exam, and it's what I would give you um, on a quiz or something like that. Um, so you don't have to memorize the equation. You don't have to remember. Um, a couple things that are maybe tricky to remember is the pressure constant down below where it says R, 0.0831. One and then the long, um, the long label, and then um, temperature in Kelvin. And let me just review temperature in Kelvin here really quickly. Actually, there's a couple things we should review. I'm going to go to the front page and then we'll do the reviewing there. All right. Um, so on that front page, um, it reminds you of what the equation is. So the water potential. Remember the. Potential refers actually to potential energy, how much energy is stored in the water and its ability to do work. Um, and the textbook gives some really interesting examples about how water coming into plant cells can actually um, increase the girth of their I think that's the right word, girth, of their roots. And then the roots can actually destroy um, sidewalks. Like think about how much energy that is. That's really impressive. Or the book also mentions, which I had never heard of, um, that in um, grains, sometimes when they were carried in the hulls of ships, if they got wet, well, it's in a ship, it could get wet, um, that they would start to increase and that all of that added um, growth, all that added water pressure could actually damage the hull of the ship and cause it to sink. Oh my gosh, that's horrifying. So that's what water potential is referring to. It's just the potential for this water to do work. Okay. And then Paul Anderson taught us the equation, um, psi equals psi S plus psi P. So the solute, um, the solute potential plus the pressure potential. I've never actually taught this particular worksheet, so hopefully I will not be too awkward as I'm talking through it. So um, quickly, the equation for the solute potential is a little bit tricky. The equation for the pressure potential is not at all tricky. Um, so for um, the solute potential, we're going to do ICRT, negative ICRT. So I is the ionization constant. And we're going to just really deal with two ionization constants. So if it's a polar molecule, it stays as one molecule when it gets dissolved in water. And so water molecules gather around it because they're also polar. And then those water molecules are not available to freely flow through a semipermeable membrane. Um, so it reduces water's ability to pass through because it's polar and it's catching some of these water molecules. Um, a salt, however, an ionic compound like salt, when it dissolves, and I'm talking about table salt, there's lots of other salts that are also ionic compounds. We're just talking about table salt here. Um, it breaks into Na and Cl, and those both attract water molecules around them. So it does sort of twice the damage. It hogs up twice as many water molecules. So we give it a um, an ionization constant of two. In AP Biology, we are never going to talk about any other ionization constant other than one 
or two. If it's a polar molecule, glucose, the most common ones we're going to be talking about is glucose and sucrose sugars. Um, if, if it's a polar molecule, then its ionization is one because it doesn't break into multiple parts. If it's um, a salt, an, an ionic um, salt, well, that's by definition what a salt is. Anyway, um, the ionization um, is going to be two. The ionization constant is going to be two. And it gets a negative sign because it negatively impacts the water potential. All right, so that's I. C is the um, concentration. And this is a part that Mr. Anderson was talking about that we haven't really had yet in chemistry class. So all you need to know about molarity is that it's a measure of how concentrated something is. So for example, um, if, well, okay, just to be clear, if I have a five molar um, solution, saltwater solution, and I have a 0.5 molar saltwater solution, the five molar solution is more concentrated than the 0.5 molar solution. Um, what it refers to is how many moles of salt are dissolved in a liter of water. Um, another way of saying it that might make more sense right now to your brain, because we haven't talked a lot about moles yet, um, is if I dissolved 50 grams of salt in a liter of water, or if I dissolved five grams of salt in a liter. 50 grams is more concentrated, five grams would be less concentrated. So that's just how concentrated, molarity is just how concentrated the solution is. A bigger number, hold on just a second, I need to pause this. Uh, give me just a moment, I'll be right back. I have to help a student. Okay, um, hopefully I can keep track of what my train of thought was and then I can keep moving here. Um, I think where we were talking about, we were talking about the concentration of what molarity means, that it's talking about how concentrated something is. Um, and now we need to talk about the pressure constant. So this is something, again, we haven't had in chemistry class yet. It has to do with um, gas, gas pressure and we haven't had a gas unit yet. Are you kidding me? Now my dog's gonna talk. This is where you fast forward. Trixie, shush. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, hopefully she will not bark anymore. I'm very sorry, you guys. Okay, um, so where am I? So the R is a constant. It has to do with gas pressures. We haven't had our gas um, unit yet in chemistry class, um, but just trust me that it's a number that, that is unchanged. So you're gonna use the same number for all of these problems, um, and it just has to do with atmospheric pressure. Don't worry about it. Okay, and then temperature is the last one, and I can't remember if we talked about Kelvin um, yet in chemistry class or not, but ke the Kelvin scale is another temperature scale, um, just like Fahrenheit and Celsius are temperature scales. Kelvin is based on the Celsius scale. For Celsius, water freezes at zero degrees, which I think is really convenient. Um, for Kelvin, they, um, they use for zero degrees, for zero Kelvin, it's actually absolute zero, which is the point where um, motion stops and matter collapses. It's a sort of a theoretical temperature. Anyway, that is 273 degrees lower than zero degrees Celsius. So they use the same scale. The degrees are the same distance apart. But for Kelvin, in order to convert into Kelvin, you have to do 273 plus whatever the temperature is in Celsius. So let, let me give you an example. Let's say the temperature outside is 30 degrees Celsius, in order to figure that out in Kelvin, we would be we would do 273 plus 30 to get 303 Kelvin, and that would be the temperature outside. Okay, um, and I think that's really high temperature, actually, now that I think of it, but whatever. Uh, moving on. And then let's see, the ionization constants we already talked about, pressure potential for water um, in an open container. So if I have water in a beaker, for example, and this is assuming that we're at sea level, if we weren't at sea level, pressure constant would be a little bit different, but we're just going to assume sea level for all of these problems. Um, it's going to be zero in an open container. So that second half of the equation, the psi p, if it says that it's an open container, we're going to give it a zero. Um, in this worksheet, they say the, the psi p, the pressure potential for a plant cell is one. That is not always the case. It depends whether the plant is um, really um, turgid, it has high turgor pressure, or whether it's um, flaccid, which means that it has low turgor pressure. Um, so one is not a constant, but on this worksheet, they're choosing one. Um, they would have to give you the pressure potential, um, or you'd have to calculate the pressure potential um, if they didn't give it to you. 
All right, that, that'll make sense as we go through this worksheet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first question. The first question isn't even really a problem. It's just sort of a theoretical what would happen. Um, if a plant cell has a lower water potential than its surrounding environment, well, water is always going to travel from high pressure or high potential to low potential. It's going to go from high to low always. That's how osmosis goes. So if it's got um, a lower potential, then water is going to go into it. So we say that the cell is hypertonic to the environment and the environment is hypotonic. So an example would be like distilled water. Distilled water would um, have a high water potential and it would rush into the cell. Um, so if the, if the cell has the lower water potential, then we say it is hypertonic to the environment and the environment is hypotonic to the cell the cell will gain water. Okay, number two, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna get my picture out of the way. Um, what is the solute potential, psi S, of a one molar, that's just concentration, sucrose solution, that's a polar molecule, so its ionization constant is just one, um, at 22 degrees Celsius, we have to convert that into Kelvin, under standard atmospheric conditions. So that means that there's no fancy pressure or anything that we have to worry about. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna, sorry that I'm making it go to the ceiling, but that way I can write on mine a little bit um, better. So they're asking for what is psi s? And remember that the equation negative i crt. So in this case, um, because sucrose is a polar molecule, it's going to be a negative one. The um, molarity is 1.0 mo molar. Um, so that was C. Um, that's a concentration. R is that um, number that's always going to be the same. It's the gas constant 0 h there we go, 0 0.0831 with a very long um, label, and I'm, I'm going to skip the label. I don't usually skip labels, but in this case, I'm going to. Um, and then the temperature is, we have to get it into Kelvin, so we'll do 273 plus 22. So if we do all of that math, and I'm not going to do all the math on my calculator right now because I have already calculated the answer in the answer in this case. And please tell me if you see me um, have any wrong answers. Um, because this is the first time that I have done this worksheet. So if you see me screw it up, I don't want people to be all confused. So our answer for this one is going to be negative 24.5 bars. That is the solute potential. Um, all we calculated was psi s. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. What did I screw up here? I wanted a different color. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Oh, there we go. There's color. Hello. I'm being clueless. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at number three. I'm going to scooch it up a little bit. Number three says zucchini cores are measured and determined to have a sucrose concentration of 0.36 molar. So there's our, there's our capital C. Calculate the solute potential of these cells at 22 degrees Celsius. All right. So that's psi S equals negative um, I C R T. I won't write that every time, but I'm just reminding us. So this is sucrose. Sucrose is polar. So it's a negative one. Its concentration is 0.36 molarity. The R, R um, gas constant is always this. And then the temperature is 273 plus 22, which in this case is 295. All right, and then we calculate it all out, and I am not going to do the calculations. I strongly recommend that you do the calculations to check your own math and to check my math. And I got a negative 8.83 bars. There should be an S, but my picture's in the way. All right, and then letter B says, if the zucchini cores are placed in pure water, will water go into or out of the plant cell? Well, water moves from high um, water potential to low po water potential. Um, pure water has a water potential of zero. And I'm going to remind you why that, I mean, not why that is, but just that that is, um, give me a second, has a water potential of zero. So moving back down so you feel good about that. Come on, I'm trying to get my, my worksheet is frozen. There we go. Come on. Um, so it has a zero and then the um, water potential in this case. So it says, therefore, water will move into the cell. So pure water has a um, potential of zero. Therefore, water will move into the cells um, because we're going from zero to a minus um, 8.83. So you're going from high concentrate or high water potential zero, that's high, to a negative number, that's low. So water will go in. So I will say water moves 
from zero. That's its psi to negative 8.83. That was the of the solution that we calculated. So it's going to move um, into the cells, into the cells. All right, I move on. I keep getting interrupted and it is confusing while I'm trying to do this video. Okay, I was on number four. I'm on number four right now. A dialysis bag containing 0.1% sucrose is placed in a beaker containing 0.4% sucrose. The beaker is open to the atmosphere. So assume that the pressure is zero in an open beaker. So now this problem has mostly been done for us. We just need to understand what's going on. So it says, what is the water potential of the beaker contents? Well, it gives us um, psi S is a minus four plus um, psi P is a zero. So the water potential is a minus four bars. And then um, for the dialysis bag, it says, what is the water potential of the dialysis bag? They give us this, so psi s plus psi p is still a minus one, so minus one bars. Now the question is, which way is the water going to move? Is it going to move into the dialysis bag or out of the dialysis bag? Um, and it's going to go from higher pressure to lower pressure. Minus one is actually higher pressure than minus four is, so it's going to go, let's see, water is the water of the dial. So it's going to go from the dialysis bag. I'm just checking, checking to make sure. So it's going to go out of the dialysis bag. So from the dialysis bag um, into the water because the dialysis bag has a higher pressure than the potential water potential of the beaker itself, of the beaker contents. All right, um, number five, it says, if a potato is allowed to dehydrate by sitting in the open air, would the water potential of the potato cells decrease or increase? Um, if water is leaving, if water is leaving, then psi um, decreases. There's just not as much water potential if there's not as much water there. So that one's pretty straightforward. Let's move. I'm trying to go to the next page. Let's see. It's this page. I don't know why I just folded my computer over and being dumb. Hold on just a second. There we go. And I got to make this a lot bigger so my old lady eyes can read it. Oh my goodness. I'm going kind of slow today, guys. Sorry. All right. What is the water potential for, suc for a sucrose solution? That is 0.1 molar. Assume I is one for sucrose and that the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. So we're going to do the full equation. Remember that the full equation, let's see if I can scoot this down. Remember the full equation is um, psi S plus psi P. Okay. And so they gave us for a sucrose solution that is one molar. Okay, so I had to think that one through for just a second because they didn't indicate um, psi p for us. It must we're just must be assuming that this is an open um, this is an open beaker. They didn't actually say that in the problem, and that's why I froze for a moment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and calculate that out. So psi s is i negative i c r t. So i is negative one. The um, concentration is 0 0.1 molar, the um, gas constant, and then the temperature 273 plus 10 makes that 283. And when we multiply all of that out, we should get an answer of minus 2.35 bars, minus 2.35 Bar. So go ahead and check your work and make sure that you have that correct. Um, number seven says, what is the solute potential, psi, um, psi S, for a sodium chloride? So that's ionic, so it's going to break in. We're going to have an ionization of two. Um, that is 0.5 molar. And so we're going to go ahead and find um, just psi S. I'm going to switch colors. I always like to switch colors just so your eyeballs can see it a little bit differently. So psi S equals ICR, negative ICRT. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So negative 2, the concentration was 0.5 molar, the gas constant, and then the temperature 25 plus, so 273 plus 25. 
equals and I it looks like the answer I'm trying to I, I didn't want to go through the whole answer myself it looks like it's negative 24.8 um, please let me know if I've done any of these incorrectly I didn't want to take time multiplying it out in front of you although I might do some of them that way but I just want to make sure that I didn't flub it up royally all right, um, number eight, let's go ahead and switch colors again. We'll go for an orange this time. A plant cell has a solute potential of minus four bars and a pressure potential of one bar. So remember, you add those together to get the water potential. What is its water potential? Well, you add those together. So um, I'll just do it this way, equals, so minus 4.0 plus... 1.0 would be minus 3.0 bars. Okay, so that's the first answer. Um, if this cell is placed in a solution with a water potential of minus 5 bars, what will happen to this cell? So I like to draw it. So imagine that we have a beaker here. This is the water. Here's my cell that's a minus 3, and the water is a minus 5. Oops, not a minus 0. 0.5, just a minus 5. Well, okay there, minus five, um, it's going to go from high to low. So that means in this case, water is going to head out of the cell um, because minus three is a bigger number than minus five is, which is a little confusing when you're dealing with minuses. All right. Um, so that cell will shrink. Number nine, um, the value for psi in root tissue was found to be um, minus 3.3 bars. If you take the root tissue and place it in a one molar solution of sucrose at 20 degrees in an open beaker, so that means our pressure is going to be zero, what is the psi of the solution and in which direction would the net um, flow of water be? So give me just a second to make sure I have that all straight in my head. We're on number nine, right? All right, so the solution, psi S for the solution, give me a second to read it through. Um, if you take root tissue and place it in a one molar sucrose solution, so that's going to be um, a minus one because sucrose is polar and it doesn't break up. And then the concentration of that solution is 0 0.1 molarity. And then we've got our gas constant. And then we've got our temperature, which 273 plus 20 is 293 Kelvin. All right, so that's for the solution. And so if we multiply all of that out, it looks like it is um, negative 2.43 bars. Negative 2.43 bars. And this is the solution. And the root tissue was negative 3.3 bars. So negative 2, that's such an awkward 2, negative 2.43 bars, that's still ugly. Um, negative 2.43 bars is a bigger number. So the water is going to flow from the solution into the root cell. So let's change my color so we can see that better. From solution into root cells. Okay. Um, next, you are stranded in a lifeboat. Ooh, never be stranded in a lifeboat. Um, with several other people in the middle of the ocean. That is a bad situation. You have run out of clean drinking water and are very thirsty. Um, the others have started to drink seawater to quench their thirst. Bad choice. Since you're waiting for rescue, you decide to solve a couple of water potential problems. Why wouldn't you? To determine if the drinking seawater is a good idea or not. It is not. And it is... To me, still to me, it is a staggering idea. The idea is that the concentration of water in the ocean is less than the concentration of water in your cells. That is crazy. So there's so much salt in ocean water that if you drink the salt water, the water leaves your cells because you have a higher concentration of water inside your cells. So that's that's the general idea. And it is so counterintuitive, but let's just go with it. All right. So it says the majority of ions dissolved in seawater is NaCl, roughly a 0.5 molar NaCl concentration. The ionization constant of um, salt is two because it's, it's an ion, so it splits into two. We should just know that. I shouldn't have to give that to you. Calculate the solute potential for seawater if you know that the water is at two degrees Celsius. So we're going to do the solute potential. So that's the psi S 
ICRT. So I was a negative two because it splits into two molecules. Um, it's not molecules, two ions. Um, where am I? So then concentration is 0 0.5 molar. The gas constant is 0, 0.0. Oops, that came out funny. 0 0.0831. And the um, temperature is 273 plus 2. So 275 Kelvin. And I'm just going to look at the answer key really quickly. It looks like that is minus... 22.9 bars, 22.9 bars. Okay, and then is that, did I answer everything on that one? Yes, so, and yeah, so that's the whole thing that we're looking for in that case. Um, there's no other, um, like there's no other pressure potential because we're not in a contain, we're not in a container right now. We don't have any pressure pushing on us specifically. So minus 22.9 bars for the ocean. Your own cells, oh man, what did I just do? I'm trying to raise it up and it deletes. So your own cells, there we go, have a 0.15 molar so, um, salt concentration. Calculate the solute potential for your own cells knowing that the body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look. So we would do psi S is minus two again. Your concentration is 0 0.15 molar, um, 0 0.0831. Temperature is 273 plus 37. Um, and that all equals, and I'm going to tell you what that equals. Um, minus 7, minus 7.73 7 bars. All right, so which way is water going to go? Letter C says, using your knowledge about water potential, if you drink the seawater, we're supposed to just know this, but now we can prove it mathematically, what will happen when the seawater comes into contact with your body's cells? This is a higher number. This is a lower number. So water is going to go from your cells out into the ocean water. That's not that. That's a funny way of saying it. It's going to leave your cells. So you might get bloated. You might urinate it out, um, but you're not going to get water out of it. I mean, like your cells aren't going to get hydrated. Your cells, water will not come into your cells to make you feel less thirsty. Um, okay, so water will move out of the cells. And then letter D, is drinking seawater a good idea for survival? Um, it is definitely not a good idea for survival because the, um, as you drink, you actually dehydrate yourself more. So you're better off just not drinking despite the fact that you have an entire ocean in front of you. Now, here's an issue that students have all the time. Well, I've gone swimming in the ocean and it didn't hurt me. And when I drank the ocean water, no, it doesn't drink. It doesn't hurt you if you have other things that you can drink. Um, so if you drink a pop or you drink um, some, you know, tap water or a bottled water, then you're fine. Um, it's the same thing that happens. It's the same issue that happens when you eat potato chips, the potato potato chips, everybody. Um, there's a high salt content in that. And so it makes you thirsty because it's pulling the, pulling the water out of your cells. Um, so what effect will drinking seawater have on you and your chances of surviving? Um, it's a bad idea. And your chances of survival go down. All right, cuties, hopefully that was enough. That's the end of the worksheet. So hopefully that was enough to get you started on the work, the next worksheet. It's just one page and I do provide you with an answer key. Let me know if you have any questions. Oops, that didn't work. Now I got to shut it down.